So, avian industry, how it deals with its customers and what, how, it, how it treats them should be changing and no one's admitting that it is changing, but you, you think that perhaps people don't have the skills to acknowledge the change and deal with it. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a very good way of putting it, Clive. I, I do think there's been a big change in the last few years in the industry. Um, and I think there's more to come. Um, and part of the problem currently uh, is, is the AV industry itself and recognising where it needs to go to and what it needs to provide to its customers. Um, through the last few years, we've had COVID, we've had a number of different challenges. Um, and the realisation came to me that um, there are other industries that look after their customers better. So if you look at the IT industry, they will work with their clients uh, to determine what they need. Let's take a laptop, for example. If a large corporate's going to buy a series of laptops, they will determine the need for that laptop, the quality of the camera, the sound card, all of the different elements of that laptop. They will then um, purchase some of those laptops and they'll test them, they'll put their software on it, they'll make sure that it functions properly with all the peripherals that they have, and they have teams of people to do that. Then they'll purchase them and then they'll roll them out. And if there's software, they'll have a process for delivering and changing and rolling out that, la that uh, laptop and that software. It's their responsibility. They might outsource it to an IT company to actually do it, but those team will be a embedded service provider uh, for that client. And they take it very, very seriously. The challenge with AV is that we've always been in a little bit of a cottage industry, even though if you look out there, you wouldn't think it because it's massive. But the clients have never taken it seriously. And the... the resource therefore is not behind it and that feeds into a number of things so if you take that laptop example and you said to a client whose responsibility is it they'd go yeah it's mine if you said the same thing for network switches yeah it's our responsibility to make sure our network is secure and it's the right switches and it's configured properly with av if i say the same question whose responsibility is it to define which video platform they use hmm Often it will be the systems integrator that is defining what that is, and it's no responsibility for the client. And how their systems and their standard rooms work will be the same thing, be pushed off to the systems integrator or a consultant or somebody, when actually it should be the client's responsibility to understand what those things are. How many clients and how many organizations have their own AV design and testing team, for example, who are designing and require, gathering the requirements, mapping the technology to those requirements, testing the technology, pro properly proof of concepting it, that's not just turning it on and putting it in a corner and saying it works, building it into your service process and approach and making sure those things are configured. And then once you've done that proof of concept, actually rolling it out, testing it and getting feedback. There are, they are out there. Don't get me wrong, they are out there, but the large majority are not taking the AV, the approach to AV seriously. It's the old adage, it's just a big TV. So that needs to change because it, it has a knock-on effect into our industry. We struggle with recruitment. Um, there's not enough people in the industry to actually fill those roles. And um, if, if it was taken seriously like the IT, the IT industry has a very you know, known career path and you can go and be a project manager. don't have to be particularly technical on that, it's just project management. But it's an IT project manager because they have stage gates and management processes that they have to go through to deliver that IT. We need to shift to that process because video is a core platform now. It's a core important part of, of um, uh, people's uh, and organisations' um, operational process. So they need to take that seriously. As an AV industry, I think we need to help them by providing them those services. It shouldn't be a salesperson going and saying, oh yeah, you need this, here you are, sign that PO, and, I'll, and then the engineering team struggling to install it, and then the client saying, well, that's not what I wanted. They should be telling this, the systems integrator, that's what I want you to install, install it here. And then here's the change management process to roll it out to my users and make sure they're aware with it. So there are roles missing within our organizations and there are approaches missing. Um, uh, and uh, you know, I'm spending a lot of time developing those approaches with, with the organizations that I work with um, to, to make sure that we get ahead and restructure uh, to be able to provide that, analyzing the, what the client um, has in place is their service fit for you know purpose is their design process what do they do how do they they procure why you know what what benchmarks do they have you know what are their processes throughout the system and then developing services that actually 
plug those gaps for them and deliver that design and testing or service design and then service delivery and starting to build those things out for them. I think that's where the industry is going from a, it becomes a service offering. There's so many wonderful products out there that, that clients need to be able to see and test and, and ensure that they work for them. See, I thought we had the, all these bases covered. I mean, you know, all the people, all the judges we have, they're, they're sort of semi-consultants, AV managers. If, if they don't have their own in-house team, especially the banks, they've got consultancy or third-party support that becomes their own in-house team. So plenty of people about where they're lacking knowledge is in services, maintenance and development. And I've always, as you know, uh, you know, wanted to be where we could review products in sensible environments that work properly, not necessarily new ones. Now, it's a big investment for an individual company to, to put that in themselves, which they perhaps might do with, with IT. When the, when the integrators were supplying them, they'd, have, they'd develop an off-site and mirror the site and then deliver it to the client, which are, a lot of them tend to do, especially in telecoms. So it's difficult to know which way that goes and where the skills are lacking. Integrators certainly probably don't, although they'll probably kill me for saying so. I see a big expansion of the consultancy area for, for, for people getting their hands wet, but it's just difficult to know, especially when we're trying to attract new talent. It is a bit of a chicken and egg. Okay, so let's just, it, it, you're, you're absolutely right in that. It's a chicken and egg situation. Which comes first, the service or the service and support platform? So if you are, uh, AV systems now can be monitored, managed, um, various different um, uh, elements of them can be all brought together. You can, you've got room sensors, you've got occupancy sensors, you've got air monitors, you've got uh, reporting on the screens. You can, you can tell what's working, what isn't working. But unless you design that solution to do that, and very early on, you understand and the organization understands what it wants to do, why it wants to do it, because it has a direction that it's going to get to, and it's going to use that data to get to a point um, and to, to, to develop the services that they provide internally. And if they've got that properly mapped out end to end, it becomes very difficult from the service side because AV is, is very different from IT. IT, I can do it remotely, sit on my laptop, da da da, it's just you and me. Um, I'm talking to you, you've got your laptop. In a meeting environment, it's much bigger, you might have 20 people in a room. If you need to take control of that, if you need to support that, there's a different mentality between the two organi in industries. But if you don't have that plan and that strategic goal to develop your products to be able to be network controllable, monitorable as an, an entire system, you're not going to be able to make that happen. Now, we had the old problem in that IT companies and IT organizations within an organization want that to happen, but they're still very reticent to allow AV systems to go on there. So everybody talks about IoT solutions, et cetera, but it's like a piecemeal piece, and it's not done as a, as a, as a one um, um, design and solution with a goal and the information that you're going to gather from it. Um, and that then obviously has a knock-on effect to the service and support. You, you've got to find the right people who can support it. You can support a lot more remotely, so you could have different skill sets doing that. And then you can then save the skill sets for the physical interaction and personal piece, which is very important with AV. It's a very hands-on piece. Um, that comes from the live events, because essentially every meeting is a live event. And so you have to have that mentality, and you'd have to plan that, that service and support. It comes back to, do organizations, big organizations, take it seriously enough? Um, I'm seeing a change that they are starting to take it seriously, but it does take these conversations fairly robust conversations with, with some organizations to actually go, actually, this is really important to your, your, your organization and you need to have people that understand this and therefore you need to take them seriously and that comes with a value. And only if you can do all of those things does that value increase and therefore you get more people into the industry and the, 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 the value goes up um, and, and people then are um, uh, able to earn the money they want. Because at the moment you've got an, an, an imbalance is, is people are very expensive because there's not very many of them. But then are the skill sets there and are you paying the right money for the skill sets? And it's, it's a bit out of kilter. We had this sort of discussion a while ago about the IT industry having ITIL and the service managing being a central core of their, their know-how. It's almost like a hybrid hybrid skill that ties the, science, the, the technical with the business. And <clears throat> that we anticipate that would be in huge demand. Not that I haven't seen much development of all that. It is an IT, it's coming from IT out rather than AV in. Yeah. But, you know, when everybody talks about the installations we're looking at now, God help us if we have an IT guy in control. 
or IT woman, in fact. You know, it has to be a Navy person in that works very well with IT. You, yeah. Our industry has not been best, best known for its interoperability and, yeah. and its strength has been in proprietary individual as, uh, installations. That is slowly changing. As say, Bloomberg is strategic, it's running its rights yeah. with the company. Yeah. You know, with this virtual production, you can see certain instances in higher education where it's, it will transform online services, yeah. which have hitherto been left to wither on the vine and transform into an amazing environment for both lecturers and, and the students who are paying a lot of money for the services. As, you know, yeah, uh, you I, can see elements of all this work in there as to what, uh, how much of that actually goes into the infrastructure of the company itself. You're seeing with lots of meeting rooms, lots of services having to be provided down the pipe, as, as it were. That is a very huge investment. You bring the CIO in because it's strategic to the company now. Yep. All, all these elements are coming in at various yep. stages. There's, there's certain killer apps yeah, that probably change people's thinking, but it's very piecemeal. Yeah, and, and that's and that's it. It is very piecemeal, and that's that's because organisations don't haven't necessarily caught up with how important it is. They see that they want it, they want video, but they think it's just a platform. And that again, that's that I see is changing. So the large IT manufacturers used really did try and commoditize AV, and this it is still happening. There is a large commoditization of certain elements of AV. That doesn't mean it's any less difficult to deploy. It doesn't mean that actually because it's a physical infrastructure and people are trying to move away from um, uh, making it less difficult to deploy, but that still means you've got, you've got strategic rollouts, you've got planning, you've got procurement, you've got a whole series of things that are very important in that process that does need that AV experience and knowledge. It is slightly different from, um, from IT. In fact, it's, it's very different. They have a, 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 a really important role for each other. And, and again, I've said this to you before in, when we've spoken, those um, conversations with IT and they need to understand, we need to understand more about their processes and um, organizations need to understand that they need to map some of those processes specifically to AV and get those in place. That is specific to each organization. And that's what the difference, we're trying to put shoehorn in um, the same sort of things into the same, in, into different organizations. Are working practice, practices changing sufficiently to make elements of this happen? Ah, now that's another good question because working practice is one of the people that I've been working with. Um, uh, uh, I have a really uh, amazing product that I'm working with at the moment, which is which is a great interactive augmented reality presentation tool that puts you inside your meeting. And we've put it into a large advertising agency in London and they love it. But they're really a little bit scared about using it. So there's that change management piece. And I went to the person that I'm working with there and said, look, I'm a bit confused. They love it, but they're not using it as much. And he said, it took a global pandemic to get them to use video conferencing. So you look, give us a bit of time. And so there is that change management piece that we have to do with the users. They are still getting, we've been doing it for years. I mean, you know, we understand that interactivity. It's very simple for us to be able to, to touch and control things remotely. But the users are still getting confidence with it. And that confidence comes by having quality, stable systems. And we've often hear, heard in the AV world, oh, it doesn't work, it doesn't do what I want it to do. It doesn't, it breaks. It's, we know that it's often user issues, but we need to support them through that. And we need to give them the change management and say, well, it won't do that. It'll do this. So you get used to using it like that. And they need to understand what the systems can, can't do, how they're used, but you also need to provide them with the right support, which is why that end-to-end -end journey, what is it you want to do? You know, what have you got in place? That's your assessment. Then you've got your, your strategy and your management of that and planning that, that what you found in your assessments. And you then take that into your design and assessment of what you need and the design and, and, and uh, proper testing of those tools and, and, and peer testing out into the environment. Um, and then you've got to design your service process around that. And then you've got to do your, your installation and, uh, 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 and your procurement and installation. And it, it's, a, it's a flow, but often the AV industry doesn't help itself, it just jumps to the box straight away. And we need to add more value and help our customers with that um, more um, engaged 
uh, uh, process around what is it that they need, why do they need it, how do we test it, make sure that it meets with their IT security so that we can take the benefits of, of the Internet of Things, we can connect everything up, we can get them that data and then start to show them what that benefit is. If you don't have a strategy, you're never going to do it.